table of contents unfolds before you. Let's see what they mean by local concern. Unsurprisingly, much of this section is taken up with articles declaring unqualified support for the dock workers strike. You skim the headlines. Paint the harbour red and white. Martinez tames the wild pines. A city in revolt. First we take Martinez, then we take La Delta. Finally, there's a brief article by the writer G. Martin accusing the owner of the Cape Side apartments of illegally attempting to evict certain communist tenants simply for not having paid their rent. Damn communists should have killed a lot of them when they had the chance. If it weren't for the wild pines, all those moochers would be out of job. Charging rent just to live somewhere is pretty outrageous. Wouldn't it be better for everyone if labour and capital could reach some reasonable accommodation? Why should I care? This doesn't have anything to do. Okay, so... The idea of... Okay, this is an interesting thing that will change depending on what your political opinions are, but... Let's go with this one. So, ch charging rent just to live somewhere is pretty outrageous. On the one hand, yes, that is pretty outrageous. On the other hand, I can kind of see an, I, uh, the thing of someone is living in an area that they don't want to live in, so they want to move to another area which is already occupied by somebody else. That person can charge and an amount, whether it's rent or whether it's, you know, goods, services, bartering, whatever, to say, yes, you, you can stay in the same area. But that comes down to the same thing of why is the original area not a good place to live? Is it just because of location? Like, it's not close to water, it's not close, to, it's, it's cold, it doesn't have shelter, it's like, things like that. Um, in general, though, I would kind of agree, charging rent to live somewhere is pretty outrageous, and that's speaking of someone who does have their own home. So, yeah, I, I, I can kind of go with this, actually. Uh, I think I've talked myself into choosing this as an option. Because this is kind of, it's a compromise, but it's in the favour of the capitalists in the first place. This is going way too far in the opposite direction. And this is going into, you know, that they are mooching because... Where they should be grateful. So out of all these options, I think I actually align with this one the most. The writer G. Martin remarks dryly that capitalists love wealth redistribution so long as it's only redistributed upward. That is probably accurate. It's true. The rentiers have been bleeding you dry. You really ought to find your own place one of these days. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. Alright, let's put it away. That actually passed a lot more time than I thought it would. And I know the game did say a, a hint of, if you want to pass time, read books. So that is the first time that I've actually read a book. So if we do The Greatest Innocence or the handwritten note, then that might take more time away. So, oh, uh, didn't we? No, didn't we? Don't do it. Right, uh, Kim? Hey. Uh, who, me? Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. How come there's word on the street? You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impale all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket, literally murder all human beings regardless of their political beliefs. That kind of stuff. Oh right, that sounds like me. I haven't said anything like that. I've said some mildly left the wind wing things, but none of those. Oh yes, the mask of ambivalence. Don't deny it. You're about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that would devour and masticate mankind. Cult of the lamb! Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Wait, first, what's this communism even about? Failure. It's about failure. Failure? Yes. Abject failure. Total, irreversible defeat on all fronts. Absolutely vanquished. Beaten. Curb stomped and pissed on. Until you came along. You will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world. You alone. 
against every living thing, against every human alive. 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossibly well-organized ruling class. Towering city blocks of bankmen who have the ears of prime ministers. Million-headed armies of nations and the love of your own mother. Okay, so the idea of the, a figurehead to lead a political ideology has some merit because people like to follow charismatic leaders and so on. But the idea that a communist would be able to go up against every other capitalist force in the world is probably not very, very realistic. You against the atom, the charm and the spin, where the whole world fell. Matter fell to bend to human will. Human will fell to get out of bed and tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly, will rebuild the dreams of the working class. You are the last communist. I should also mention that I would consider myself to be more socialist, but communist is probably a bit too far in now that direction. get to work, comrade. So the thing is that I don't know whether... what building communism means in the context of the game, and also... Well, I guess it only affects me and my thoughts, because I, my actions would, detect, would dictate what other people do. And I don't know whether there's also going to be an option to actually do socialism, or I guess it might be liberalism, I don't know. I'm not that politically involved, but all right, let's try doing communism. Oh yeah, get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Wait, what? Firing squads? You didn't say anything about those. Too late to back out now. You can't make an omelette without breaking a few million eggs. So now it's going to go fully into the Stalin angle, all right. Roll your sleeves up further and breathe in the pristine air. Thought gained, Mazovian socio-economics. So what does this do? Temporary research bonus, visual calculus looks like reaction. Research time, 3 hours and 10 minutes. People think communism was some crazy idea that had its comeuppance 40 years ago. A fever that shook the world, never to return again. They were right, until he woke up today. A spiritual corpse responsive only to the call of Commodore Red, prostitutes and Krasmazov. For him, communism is still a thing. He will single-handedly raise the commune of O2 from the oceanic trench where it has been resting, covered in ghosts and seaweed. He is the big communism builder. Come, witness his attempt to rebuild communism in the year 51. Okay, if I try and internal, uh, So, I can't internalize this. Okay. So, Lonesome Mong Wing Ho, I've internalized to give plus one... Uh, Perception cap and speed gives one psyche, so that's everything. The magnesium based life form is about to finish, and white morning will take a bit of time. Uh, I guess what I might do next is if I. Yes, I can unlock another thing if I have a skill point to do so. So I think I might spend my skill points on that and fill up all these thoughts first before I put any more into my skills. All right, uh, Kim, what's up? We should think about calling it a day, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for damages yet. You should take care of that, then. But I don't have the money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Yeah, finance plan or something. Okay. But first, we need to carry on snooping around in here. Standard office file cabinet, the drawers seem to be locked. Someone left the coffee machine on. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. This is a Dewey typewriter. The model name is on the back. Every worker equals member of the board is written at the top of the flyers. On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Unfortunate, you say. Open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Browse through the folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara, and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron. Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock. 
are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Okay, so volition check of two. So this is the maximum I can have, as a reminder, uh, unless I get, like, items to increase it. So I might as well try it now. Force yourself to go through the folders. Look how blurry all the lines on these papers are. How unwieldy your own willpower is to yourself. You're like an absurdist Samaran monk, focusing through not focusing. Hermeneutics was almost within your grasp, but now only vague letters float before your eyes. Less meaningful, but aesthetically more pleasing. If I let my go eyes go completely out of focus, all shapes start melting into each other, but I actually focus through not focusing or leave the folders alone. But I focus through not focusing? You are a police officer, not a spiritual healer. You can focus the normal way by turning your attention to something and not letting go. Okay. If I let my eyes go completely out of focus, all shapes start melting into each other. Is that what you're doing with those folders over there? Uh, yes. No, of course not. Let's get back to work. Yes. Right. This is probably not relevant to our case. After all, we're not investigating an accounting mystery. Ah, uh, you never know what might be connected. Alright, so let's try this again. Volition thought focusing. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Look at the note. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweet office floor, more banners. So we have to find a Leo and an Everard. All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. Then the two lieutenant. Look, Kim, a to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Claire, probably. The head of the Debarders Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. Okay. The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. Take another look at the note. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoot so, all items thing. on the list. All right, close. The drawer slides shut smoothly. Uh, what's this? Magnesium-based life form. We tell them, hell no, you're about to become a magnesium-based life form. The age of the primitive carbon man is done. No longer must mankind rely on slow working background radiation to take us further into our genetic destiny. This is the era of guided evolution and magnesium is the key. You are the first of your species, the next step in human evolution. An advanced magnesium proto-man who mags it up, drinks it down, and sniffs it sideways. Alright. Plus two volition, minus one logic. So I'm a magnesium receptacle glands and no such thing, man. Okay. That is actually very good. Plus two volition means I can do more checks on things, so yes. So I've got four and four. Wow. Alright, okay, that's, that's good, that's good. Um, so logic is now at four, but I had five in the first place. Again, I can level this up all the way up to plus ten, and that will go down to nine. So, all right, oh, that's good. I can compensate for my weaknesses in a in a manner. Okay. So, uh, oh, by the way, I should have mentioned actually, I didn't intend to be exploring this during the night time, but it does make sense to do this. Postcard Le Jardin. Uh, 21. This laminated postcard offers a glimpse across the river. A little more than a decade after the war, the eastern bank is already fully renovated. The hillsides are lush with gardens and residences. Someone's parked a small beige airship by the fountain. This postcard will sell for a pretty penny. 34 cents? Really? That's a, that's a pretty penny? Neat office shade. Plus one visual calculus, eye of the reckoner, minus one drama, a bit dry. These were stuffed away in the dock workers union office. They're perfect for scribbling down paperwork when the sun tries to get in your eye. Good for staring down suspects too. Oh, why not? 
else. Magnesium. Lots and lots and lots of magnesium. Uh, did I interact with this before? I don't remember. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. All right, let's test it out with 10 cents. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. All right, interfacing six plus one long way home. Challenging, let your muscle memory dial a random number. Your fingers run over the dial pad. Zero, zero, five. That's the dialing code for Revachol. Four, nine, five, two. And a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. Nine, nine, three. Calling, calling, still calling, then. Video Revachal, 24 hour video rental. We rent eight and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy, how may I help you? The voice of a youngster on the other end sounds as enthusiastic as that of a man walking towards the gallows. What is this place? Video Revachal, it's a 24 hour video rental. We rent eight and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy. Uh, well, I'm calling from a payphone, so how would he know who I am? Um, I meant what this place is to me. Do you know me? Why did I call you? Ooh, I meant what this place is to me. Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. Do you know me? No. Okay. Why did I call you? Maybe you called to extend your rental period. Do you need to extend your rental period? Maybe, but I don't even know my name. If you need any further assistance, you can visit us on the corner of Voyager and Maine. I can't help you over the phone. Are we done? Corner of Voyager and Maine. The call is terminated by the other party. You're left with the discomforting sound of the disconnect tone. Voyager and Maine. Okay, okay. Um, right. Oh. Bottom, union logo, demand doc democracy. All right. Let's make a save. Okay, and let's head out. So this should let me back onto the balcony where I jumped across, right? Uh, if the game will do it. The door is locked and cannot be opened from the side without a pass card. Yes, you have no choice but to talk to the union leader. All right, so I can't go that way. Hmm, okay, Th this means I'm going to be exploring the harbor for a lot longer than I thought I was. Because I can't jump back over. Okay, is there a jump here I can do? Collecting rainwater. Alright, so yeah, there's nothing I can do behind that. Uh, yep. Zoom out as far as I can. So there's a few things over here. Let's zoom in, shall we? Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and Potent Pilsner. At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Wait, how hard? Well, they went through six bottles of Potent Pilsner, three bottles of Commodore Red, and almost four packs of cigarettes. It must have been pretty hard. Did I do this? Well, yes. I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. So I was here, and that lines up with why my jacket's there as well. This is really sad. I must have been miserable. Looks like I had a lot of fun. I'm still not completely convinced it was me. I must have been on an advanced scouting mission in the harbor. Let's move on. Kind of looks like I had fun. It really, really doesn't. Ah. Let's turn our attention elsewhere and move on. Yeah, I wasn't going to be able to get away with that because it's clearly over drinking, binge drinking is not, uh, you're having fun. Okay, uh, so inside. This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. If this is the night watchman's booth, why is he not here? Kim, I'm going to take a quick look inside. If you must, but please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot over here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Take the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man is young, dark skinned, and dressed in a Royal Carabineer uniform. The girl is
is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that? Something about this man piques my interest. I think this can be a side thing. I'm a cop. It's instinctual to collect evidence. I'm making an artistic photo collage. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to say something about the man piques my interest. Although I'm pretty sure peaks is supposed to be P-I-Q-U-E-S, not P-E-A-K-S. But... Fine, but let's move. I don't want to be seen snooping around here. All right, let's have a look at the thing that we just picked up. Photo of a happy couple. A black and white photo of a couple posing in front of a Ferris wheel. The girl is young and pretty, the man clad in fancy uniform and smiling. On the back of a very steady hand has written the words, Revachol Fair, Summer of 91. Okay, so this is quite an old photo then, if the current year is 51. Uh, and I would also assume that it would be for Rene, because otherwise why would he have the photo? Why would the photo be in this booth, rather? I can't reach that. Uh, I don't think there's any other things I can do at the moment. Yeah, the cursor is not selecting the other stuff lower down, so nothing to do. And I can't walk down these steps. All right, fair enough. There's something there, something there. Let's try the lights first. Actually, no, let's try this first. It's closer. All around you, great machines in quiescent. In quiescent. White pine trees are printed onto the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. Uh, okay, I wasn't expecting to go that far away from the lights. Collect the lights. A composite eye of halogen lights watches you emitting a low buzz. Oh, is that what the game thought I selected the first time? Okay. Uh, measure head crushes all. Interesting. So, I can't reach over there yet. A rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Marsh and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. So, start and stop. Marsh. On. Aret. Off. Alright, let's leave the speed for now. And I'll do a quick save. But we'll carry on investigating the thing above us. Before we come back to the hook itself. Ooh, what is that? Take all. Money gain. No suffered. You see faded industrial lettering on the platform. Valson. Right. Where else can we go? Across here? Oh, we're going a lot further than I thought we'd be getting to. But I'm literally trapped. I can't go anywhere else. The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. Alright. More money. Oh, the speaker tower is silent. There is no work to organize in the yard below. Well, yeah, because it's uh, the dead of night. The musk of oil and rust comes with the chasm in front of you. Smells like blood. Is this locked? All right. I think that sound means it's locked. The prompt isn't going red like it usually does, but I think that sound means it's locked. Why is there just, like, money lying around? Industrial-sized thermos smells like burnt coffee. Yeah, th th there is a lot of money just lying around. Container, container, container. The banner sags under the weight of rain and snow, white waves on red. 